everybody. Welcome back. We're continuing our series called Shout It Out. I hope you guys have been having a great week. Now, we already know we've started the series called Shout It Out, and it's all about gratitude. Okay, so we're going to dive deeper into that in just a moment, but it's time to see those dance moves. Everybody, let's get on up and let's get ready for worship. Jesus, you have been so faithful. Jesus, you have been so true. I will be forever thankful because I never had a friend like you. Help me to be who you've been to me, to everyone I see. Let us love one another. You with me in the darkest valley You with me on the mountain top I'm thankful that you never leave me And that your love will never stop Help me to be who you've been to me To everyone I see Let us love one another with our love No 
it's always a great time when you just get a busted move on the dance floor for God. So hopefully you guys left all your dance moves there. We're gonna move on to our memory verse, okay? And this month's memory verse comes from Psalms 136, verse one. And it goes like this. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Psalms 136, verse one. Okay, we're gonna try it one more time. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Psalms 136, verse one. Practice that and hopefully when you come to church, you'll be able to say it. Even if you're not coming to church, practice it so that it's hidden deep in your heart so you'll remember it forever. But friends, get ready, grab some pen, grab a pen, grab some paper. Let's get ready because it's time for our Bible lesson. I'll see you here in a minute. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 12 through 22. After many years of war and uncertainty, David had finally become the king of Israel. But something was still missing from the royal city of Jerusalem. The Ark of the Lord belongs here. The ark was a wooden chest that in some special way carried the presence of God among the Israelites. It had been stolen by the Philistines and then returned, and now it was sitting in the home of a man named Obed-Edom. We'll set up a tent right here for the ark. Let's go get it. David's wife, Michal, was, um, let's just say, less than enthusiastic. The dust on those back roads takes the curl out of my hair. So David gathered up all his best soldiers and marched over to the place where the ark rested. This is a wonderful day, an incredible day, an absolutely fantastic day. With great care, the men lifted the heavy ark with carrying poles. Wonderful, excellent. Let's go. That's one step closer to Jerusalem. Two, three. Are you seriously gonna count the whole way? Wait, stop. We've only come six steps. That's okay. We need to thank God for everything he's done. Right then and there, David sacrificed a bull and a calf to honor God. Okay, now we can move on. One, two, three, lift. Just walking isn't enough. We should dance for God. The ark's kind of heavy. Everyone else, if you're not carrying the ark, celebrate, sing, shout, blow the trumpets. The people shouted and ran alongside the ark. David danced before the Lord all the way to Jerusalem. As the laughing, shouting parade arrived, Michelle stared in disbelief from a window. There was her husband, the king, dancing in a simple linen garment with all the common people. Unbelievable. He looks ridiculous. Certainly not like a king. Down on the street, David continued to dance all the way to the beautiful tent he had set up. Everybody behind me, let's dance. Okay, keep on moving. Now, let's switch it up. Time for a breather. Let's put the ark right here. One, two, three, down. David made more sacrifices to honor God. Then he stood before the people. The ark has returned. God bless you. He is the one who rules over us all. He deserves our thanks for everything he's done. So let's keep celebrating. We've got some fresh bread and dates and raisin cakes for everyone. Though all of Jerusalem had turned out for the festivities, one person still refused to celebrate. When David returned home, Michal met him furious. You're the king of Israel, and you've really made yourself look good today, right? Dancing around in that thing? A linen apron. It's what the priests wear. But you're a king. You made a fool of yourself in front of all of your officials and even the servants. I did it to honor God. He made me ruler over his people. 
I can't even. I will celebrate to honor the Lord. You already said that. Oh, I'm not done. I will bring even less honor to myself if it will bring more honor to God. What is that in your beard? Raisins. <laughs> you want to do the electric slide? No. While Michelle cared more about appearances than anything else, David fixed his gaze on God because he knew nothing was more important than celebrating to thank God for all the amazing things he'd done. That was a great story. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about this. Now, when you look at this story, it would have been really easy for David to get caught up and just focused on all the negativity from Michelle. See, she thought what he was doing was odd. It was confusing, it was different, and she rejected it. But see, David loved God so much, he just couldn't help but express his worship. And for David, it came out in a really creative way. Now, think about this. Have you ever been so grateful that you lose control for a moment? Yeah. I'm not saying that you go like wild cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I'm just saying, you know, you just stop caring what people around you are thinking because you're just so grateful at that moment. See, we see it a lot at like sporting events when like your team wins and everybody's like hugging and they're crying. <laughs> Some of you guys might've been like that because you were so excited when the Dodgers won the World Series. You might've been crying. You might've been doing like some crazy happy dance and I watched some of my friends do it. But why not even more for God? See, God has done so much more for us than just a championship or a goal or something at like a sporting event. We should be grateful like that every time we think about all that God has done for us. Now, I'm not saying you have to dance and you don't worry because my dance moves aren't very good, but maybe you could show your gratitude for God through music. Maybe singing a song or playing an instrument. Maybe you show your gratitude to God through Art. Maybe you create something to show how, gra how grateful you are to God. Or maybe it's simply just telling others what God has done for you in your life and letting them see the joy that it's filled you with. No matter how you do it, take time this month, not to just show how grateful you are to those around you and your family members, but take time to just show your gratitude to God and how grateful you are for everything that he has done in your life this month. Let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes. We're gonna close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've done in our life, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross in place of us, Lord. We thank you, Father, and we love you, Lord, and we just pray, Father, that our children would have opportunities to share with those around them what you've done in their life, Lord, that they would have a chance to share how much they love you and how grateful they are for what you've done for them, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you are giving our kids opportunities this month to express their gratitude, not only to those around them, Father, but to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, friends. That's it for this week. Come back next week. Miss Princess is probably going to be here, and we can't wait to hang out with you again. Have a good one.